Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener today, it's about overwintering plants, the ones you can and the ones you can't. We're also going to talk about, is your food that you're eating really organic or organic foods? I also have a guest, Tova Martin. She's an author, and she's going to have some great knowledge for us. As well as your garden questions, and that all starts right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So happy that you've joined us in the program, taking a little time out of your day to be part of our show. Uh, there's a number of ways in which you can contact us, either right now or if you're listening later or you have a question later, you can contact us at, as well. One is the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, Ornamental trees and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, you visit ivyorganics.com. You can call in any time during the show to 414-444-5250. You can also email us at twvgshow at gmail.com. You can also hashtag us on Twitter at twvgshow, and our Twitter handle is twvgshow. Uh, one of, I'm your host, Joy Baird. We want to welcome you to the program. Next to me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. Uh, we're going to get in the program in a moment, but we want to announce that uh, we have a, a very proud and happy announcement to make for 2019. For 2019, we'll, we're going to be back here for season two. Season three. Season that too. Season uh, three. And so if we would have went over, <laughs> or if we had done rehearsal, we would have probably right. landed yeah. a little better. Uh-huh. Right? And then, yeah. in addition to that. We will have our show replayed on Sunday mornings in Philadelphia. All right. It doesn't make a bit of difference to many of you who are listening here, but we do have a tremendous amount of downloads uh, and listeners in the Philadelphia area. We're up like 780% from a year ago. And if you're watching on the replay, video replay or the podcast replay, we'll be on WWDB 860 AM in Philadelphia. Now, that was not a, hey, Holly, let's see how many 860 AM frequencies we can get on. This is simply... We, it's just a coincidence. Right. We, yeah. we, were, we emailed many stations and said, here's what we have to offer. Is this something you want to have on your station? And, and WWDB emailed back within three minutes and said, yes, let's talk. And they set a price, and uh, we brokered and bought the hour, and, and there we go. So we'll be on two stations there, or three stations and two markets. So it's really, really cool. And, and it, when we reached out, to these stations, and, and we'll get in the program in a minute. We're just going to tell a little story here since we got a little time. Uh, our, our content is relevant to the, to the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area, yes. But there's a lot of growing zones that are very, very similar or the same as Milwaukee in the zone 5A, 5B, 6A, so in that range. And, and that's where Philadelphia falls into, that they're in that same realm. And our, 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 our content, we don't solely make it for, okay, when we're in Milwaukee and growing, because we have listeners from every single state that follow us on downloads and replays that I, you know, our, our downloads are up 63% from a year ago from all over the country. And, and we're very, uh, it is very cool to have people from Seattle to Tampa to California, New York, that tune in, that download our program to listen. Yeah. Whether it's for educational or entertainment purposes, uh, they take the time to download and and listen to what we have to offer. We definitely appreciate all of our listeners, whether they're live right now or next year on our replay, or they uh, download it from their favorite podcast uh, location. So with that being said, uh, let's talk about overwintering plants. Here in the Milwaukee area, based on where you're at, uh, your sensitive plants may have already faced their death of frost. Uh, in some places, they may not have uh, here in the area, based on where your geological or your, your geographical location is. Uh, it's been in, in past years, at the large garden that you predominantly see in our videos, the neighbor's gardens would be killed by frost. But Based on the way the garden sets in a little bowl or whatever it is, I, I'm not a, a meteorologist or a, uh, anything like that, but our garden wouldn't get touched with frost. Right. So uh, we're going to go over many of these in which you can't overwinter. I mean, if, if they're dead now, they're not going to overwinter. Uh, but if you still have peppers that are alive, you can overwinter them. Yeah, you them. can overwinter them. And what you do is you're going to carefully dig them out of the ground. Now, if they're already in a container... That's easy. Right. Uh, a, a movable container. Yeah, right. So you're going to dig them out of the ground or whatever you have there, and then you're going to put it into uh, ideally probably about a five-gallon bucket size pot, something that's big enough to hold that pepper and give it so that um, 
it's got enough room and its root system and all that. So you put that in there, and then what you're going to do is you just basically take off all the leaves of that pepper. Yeah, they'll plant. fall off, but oh, yeah. you, can, you can take them off too. You're going to take it inside in like a basement, try to keep it out of direct sunlight. You don't really want you want to water it a little bit at the beginning, but there, there are specific instructions uh, 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 on online that are, are we've tried this and, and has worked. Um, and the, the key is the larger the plant, it kind of just basically goes into dormancy, and then it most of the time will come back. What we have found, and, and other experts have informed us of, the hotter the pepper is, the better the chances of overwintering it is. For whatever reason, the, the makeup of the plant, but like a traditional bell pepper, yeah, it's great if you can get it overwintered because then you take it out in the spring and you know harden it off, and you've got this giant shrub of a plant already, uh, and you're way, way ahead of the game if you can get it to overwinter. Now, if you have a greenhouse that you can bring it in, that's even better because you can keep it alive. It may not produce but you can keep it alive all winter long. Now, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, eggplant. Eggplants, you can overwinter. We've overwintered an eggplant mm-hmm. before. Wasn't able to get it to fruit, but we was able to keep it alive all winter long and, and take it back out. So maybe if you kind of want to try this, you could focus on one thing. or Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't say let's you. let's take nine, nine things out of the garden, try to fill, keep them in the living room till April next year. Do your research, learn a little bit about what might be best, and, and go from there. Right, and you definitely want to um, think about plants that might or will do well regardless of some frost. That can stay in the ground that you don't have to take in. Right, so kale. Kale is huge. Kale is a very hardy um, hardy vegetable, green leafy vegetable, and it will survive a frost. It will survive a freeze. I remember one year, probably, I don't know, like six, seven years ago, that one winter we there was kale that just never died basically because yeah. we had that really mild winter right i think it was the the, the summer of 2016 uh that was that way uh, another and and another thing is carrots we talked about this last week in the question and answer section but we'll go over it again it, carrots can be overwintered in the ground um you want to mound something over top of them now if you keep them in a, like a low tunnel that that's fine. That will work. But you can also uh, overwinter them by mounding leaves up over top of them. And I'm not saying just a few leaves. I'm f- two or three feet of leaves. And then as you need them, move the leaves back, dig them up. What you're doing is you're preventing the plant from getting exposure to the harsh elements of winter, preventing the plant f- and the, the soil from freezing solid. You're essentially keeping that carrot in a refrigerator type atmosphere in the ground. So that and, and you can harvest it all. Uh, all winter long. You want to dome, mound, dome the, kind of yeah. mound uh, leaves on top of those carrots so that it kind of insulates the ground a little bit. Right. And uh, you can do the same thing with beets. Beets, mm-hmm. yeah. Parsnips as well. Uh, parsnips, now with any of these, uh, you want to harvest these early in the spring because these are biannuals. If allowed to grow, if allowed uh, in the spring, and you don't touch them. They're going to put on a seed pod. They're going to reduce the roots root structure and focus on reproductive but seeds. That, that won't happen until the following spring. That's so right. So you, you have start, all winter long to harvest this thing. Right. These things. So you would start plant them like maybe next spring, and then the spring of 2020 is when you would be able to get the the seeds of this plant. Well, no, no, next year, next year, because they're buying you. You plant them this year. No, if you plant, but if you did, yeah, yeah if you did plant, right? That's that's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, in Brussels sprouts, <clears throat> people will say, you know, well, Brussels sprouts are a very hardy plant. Yes, they are. They're incredibly hardy. Uh, what you can do is a couple of things. One, you don't have to harvest the whole plant all at once. As you get one or two frost on the plant, as we have had here in, in Zone 5A in the Milwaukee area, you can begin harvesting your sprouts. And you want to harvest them from the base up. You don't need to take everything off the plant at once. You can go through and remove the largest sprouts and then let the rest of them grow. Um, then if, if you're going to do it the way we have done it in the past, tomorrow it's going to be, you know, four degrees, the winter's here, it's going to snow. We will remove the whole plant out of the ground and then remove the rest of the sprouts. You can put barriers around the plant and mound leaves around the plant in order to protect and overwinter and harvest them throughout the, the winter months. What you're doing is preventing the plant from freezing solid. But up to that hard winter experience, you can harvest those sprouts, those larger ones, 
uh, and they predominantly develop large at the bottom and work their way Basically, up. Basically, so. like, say you're worried about other things in your garden, you're trying to get other things cleaned out, and you're like, well, I can leave this, this, and this until I don't have to rush to get these items cleaned up. Right, right. Yeah, sometimes you don't have to rush until spring to get them clean, right. cleaned so out. That's, yeah. that's kind of what we're also telling you is, like, maybe you can let these things go a little bit longer as opposed to worrying about something like tomatoes or... Well, the other thing, the benefit to these are you have a continuous harvest. You can continue to harvest and get greens, Brussels sprouts, beets, carrots, parsnips. Right. So yeah. another one on here is chard. Chard is a, um, a leafy vegetable as well. Uh, hardy like a kale and once it's, once it's kind of grown to its, its, uh, adult stages, it becomes more hardy like kale. So that's something that you could, you could, um, harvest later on too. And, and Swiss chard comes in a variety of different stalk colors. The leaf structure is always green. The stalks can come in red, white, yellow, uh, maroonish color. And what we have found is, one, uh, the p- whole plant's edible. And we found that, two, pickled Swiss chard stems are, is not something that Holly and I enjoy at all. There may be people out there that truly enjoy the taste of pickled Swiss chard stems. We did not. We felt it had a... a, 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 a a pickle-like celery state that yeah, we tastes, did not enjoy. If you could imagine what pickled celery tastes like, that's what pickled Swiss chard stems. Yeah, like. some people may love it. It was not for us. Uh, also, what you can do with the leaves, you can do basically uh, anything that you did with spinach, you can do with Swiss chard. Uh, what we have done is we take the Swiss chard, and the larger the leaf, uh, remember, the larger the leaf, the more mature, the more uh, dense it may be. It may not be as tender. You take it out and you cut the center stem out so you have two separate sides of the leaf. And then what you can do is you take your favorite shredded cheese and put in the center of it, each one of those sections, roll it up into like a, a burrito type state, pin it with a cu- uh, cu- t- or a, uh, a paper clip, no, no, uh, toothpick. 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 Pa- and paper clip. Paper clip. Mm-hmm. A toothpick. And then you can either grill it for about 30 seconds on the grill or about a minute in the microwave until you see the cheese begin to ooze out of the side. And then you have a, a more healthy, uh, well, I guess it's a Swiss chard cheese roll up, I guess is what you would call right. it. Right. Yeah. It's definitely, um, something that is more healthy than other things you can it, eat. It's not it's, bad. No, it's, it's really good. So that, that's another thing. Uh, kohlrabi is, explain what kohlrabi is, Holly, for those who may not be familiar with what this particular uh, item is. Kohlrabi is a German vegetable. It is part of the, what's known as the Kohl family, which is also the Brassica family, which is along the lines of things like cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, um, cauliflower, even turnips. So it, it grows out of the ground obviously but it's not root crop it grows at the top of the surface um but it does have roots and it looks it kind of looks a little weird it looks like an upside down onion yeah kind of and then it has like these little stalks that come out the sides people call it alien uh, vegetable it does look like an alien it's vegetable. very very unique crop um but it, it's just uh, it kind of it tastes like between for me between like a Cabbage and a turnip. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I would, yeah, I would yeah. say, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people will saute it, pan fry it. Other people will cut it thin and just eat it that way uh, as well. A lot of people, if they know what it is, they really like it. Right. Yeah. Um, another thing you can overwinter outside, and we've done it for years, is just containered uh, rhubarb. Now, if it's in the ground, it's fine. It's going to last for many, many years. But if it's uh, uh, in a container, people say, oh, take it in. you got to take it in. We've not took ours in ever, and it's been just fine uh, with that, um, the, the hard, cold temperatures that we've yeah. experienced. Joey wanted to grow rhubarb. I don't know why. Um, but we didn't want to grow it in the ground, so we grew it in the container. Yeah, so there you go. And if your plants have already died, obviously those are not overwintered. But there's a lot of other plants that we just don't have time to cover that can be overwintered in a variety of different techniques and situations. Well, when we come back, we're going to discuss how organic is the food that you're eating, even when it's labeled organic. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Twenty four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more.
Pomona's Universal Pectin is high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. An Oya is an unglazed porous clay pot with a short neck and a wider belly. Bury your Oya neck deep in your raised bed, container, or ground garden and let the Oya do your watering by releasing water as needed. How? By soil moisture tension for all you techies out there. This is an eco-friendly, efficient, ancient way to water your plants using up to 70% less water than other irrigation methods. It saves you time and is easy to install. Find a retailer through drippingspringsoyas.com. Smart watering, easy gardening. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need. From fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cards, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414-278-7878, and online at beansandbarley.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray, 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. The Gardener's Hollow Leg, the debris and harvesting bag you wear, comes with its own belt attachment, perfect for doing light pruning, weeding, harvesting on the ground or on a ladder, and many other uses. Find out more at thegardenershollowleg.com. Save 10% by using the word veggies at checkout. Zaz Products, offering great quality supplements that can help personal health and increase longevity. Committed to bringing you the highest quality products at the lowest price. Find out more at zazproducts.com. Cranberries grown in bogs and flooded? Cranberries are grown in bogs, and at the time of harvest, they're flooded. A machine is brought in to agitate the berries off of the plant. Each berry has air cavities in which it will float to the surface, making harvest much easier than a farmer going in and picking each berry off the plant individually. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Haas Tools, Tree Diaper, Root Maker, Seeding Square, Rebel Green, Dripping Springs Oya, Zaz Products, Shield and Seal, Pomona Universal Pectin. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. Check, check. Is anybody still listening? Anybody out there? Check, check. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. We all try to eat healthy. Uh, the term organic really came to be, uh, I guess, right after the war or, you know, mid-70s, early 80s. That was when organic kind of was uh, a word that was more prevalent. And then in the last decade or so, organic, organic, healthy, healthy, healthy is uh, the important thing to do. So some of us, and, and, and many of you, understand the importance of eating healthy and understand how detrimental eating food that may contain harmful chemicals can be. So we focus on going to stores and, and growing our own produce to where we can eat healthy and eat organic. But we find on the news and we find that you know this is being recalled and that's being recalled it was supposed to be organic but they have found this in it or that chemical in it so it's not organic or this company's getting sued right so what what's going on here and how can we know what we're eating so if you don't know what organic food is it's food produced by methods that comply with the standards of organic farming so standards can vary worldwide most commonly known is that the united the united states department of agriculture is the one who standardized organic food here 
in the states. Um, but it features practices that strive to recycle, to cycle resources, promote ecological balance, conserve biodiversity without the use of conventional pesticides, fertilizers made with synthetic ingredients or sewage flood, bioengineering, or even ionizing radiation. So pesticides are not good for us as humans. They're starting to figure that out. Um, it can lower your immune system. It can make you more tired and fatigued. It can in- increase your risk of disease and or cancer. And it can ca- cause metabolic problems. Um, so with that being said, uh, when it comes to organic food, I would be more concerned with the pesticides versus like how stuff is necessarily grown. Um, the big thing about organic food is that it doesn't have the pesticides in it. There was a study done in 2014 in Switzerland. A family had removed all their conventional food from their diet, and they had their urine tested before, and then after a couple of weeks they had their urine tested after when they only ate organic, and all of those trace minerals or trace pesticides elements were, tra- yeah. elements were, um, were gone after a couple the weeks. The body cleansed itself. Uh, to get rid of all of mm-hmm. that. Now, we, we all have a certain level of toxicity in our body. It's just the way it is in 2018. Right. It's not 1947 anymore, and, and we can actually say, hey, we've been doing this for right. months, and, and, you know. Yeah, so. We're, um, as, you know, no, we're as guilty as everybody. Right, yeah. And, like Joe we're and not I 100%, 100% we're <laughs> organic, organic, vegan, none of that. We're, no, <clears throat> no, we eat, you know, conventional food. We eat a lot of healthy food and a lot of, we eat a variety of, yes. of food. Good and bad. Good and bad. <laughs> But as, um, and as Americans, there are certain staples in which we we're Americans. We love this you know, hamburgers, hot dog, that type of thing. You know, barbecue chips. That, you know what I mean? That it's we know it's not good for us, but it's something that we love to eat. Right, and you should definitely think of that more of like a treat versus something you should eat every meal. Right. Um, but anyway, not it, organic is not necessarily healthier in a sense of like, are there more nutrients? Are there? Um, is it? You know, well, yeah, yeah it's because not, the soil has been depleted, and that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. That we've lost so much nutrient value over the last hundred years, as well as varieties and the and the imp and the the, pack, the the amount of good stuff in these vegetables that were growing organically is not what it once was because of the the depletion of the soil biology that we've uh, experienced. So, if you are buying organic, that's great. Uh, for the most part, it is pretty well regulated, but there are still going to be like little loopholes, little fall throughs where maybe it's not 100% organic as much. Well, there's organic transition, I believe is the term, where yeah. a farmer can take a field that was not organic and there's a certain duration of time and th- certain number of years in which they're transitioning that field from the, seven convi- seven, from mm-hmm. the conventional to a 100% organic. So you may see that term on a piece of produce Orga- uh, tr- uh, organic trendi- transition or, or somewhere in that, that phrasing to where, yeah, they're trying to convert over, but it's gonna, it ha- has to take time for all this stuff to work out, uh, not only just the paperwork, but also get the soil back to a organic state that is deemed and in levels in which it's safe. And here's something is that the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, is supposed to be regulating this. However, um, they reported themselves reported that they failed to make sure imported organic foods actually do meet these requirements and it was part of the failure was to check the documents and do the audits but even when imported crops do meet the organic standards there's a decent chance they'll end up being fumigated upon arrival with pesticides pesticides not allowed mm -hmm, right to keep the the bugs that may be on the plants from that particular country from coming into our country so it's backfired to a certain level okay this is organic Okay, we're spraying chemicals on it to kill whatever might be on it before we give it to bring it in our country so we don't have a problem with that particular bug or insect or disease that may be trans coming tra- transporting in. And I think this goes to show the reason why we like to grow our own food. And farmers markets. And farmers markets. And that's how you can kind of prevent um, running into too many non organic, not organic, possibly organic, who knows, situations. And it comes down to the fact that you are, um, you, if you, you, have go to, control. you have control for yourself, you can talk to your farmer. You can shop stores that don't sell produce that's been sprayed with pesticides. There are um, stores that will say, you know, yes, we do sell non-organic produce, but 
they're not sprayed with pesticides. Well, and with the farmers markets, there here in the Milwaukee area, there's a number of farmers markets, and many of them are closing up because we're done for the season. But during the peak, you can you know they have it's not hidden. There's, there's winter farmers, markets. right? But it's not hidden that where their farms located. It's not like, oh, you, you can't know where we're at. No, they, uh, they welcome questions. Right. Right, and that's that's good. If they seem off, then maybe you shouldn't buy their produce. Right, you've got to have a defense right. on yourself. Yeah, they, they, they don't even want to answer that question. I don't think I want to buy their produce. I also want to mention, in order for milk and meat to be sold as organic, the animals can eat only organic feed, but mm-hmm. most feed comes from Genet- corn and soy. Which is genetically modified. Which is modified. genetically modified, which doesn't qualify as organic. So... There's also could be a catch there too. So they have it, it, can, it can be organic milk from organic cows, but the cows are not eating organic pr- food. Right. So how does that deem it being organic? Like, why is that loophole? What is somebody just not connecting the dots, or don't care, or is it just easier to say, well, we've done enough, people can figure out for themselves? Kind of. That's where it's at. Okay. So. <laughs> And well, there, there yeah. are farmers that strictly only feed, you know, organic hay, organic mm-hmm. grains. Mm-hmm. They, they, there's a, a stringent a requirement, not because it's required by the, the, the buyer, but because they have a conscience of themselves that they want to produce something that is healthy for people who are buying their right. product. And you're, you're asking why? Why is this allowed? Well, there's a lot of stuff that's allowed in the United States that, uh, just goes on. So yeah. here's just add, add that to the list. No. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like you know, you can you can do your and no matter your, what uh, administration's in charge, this has been going on for decades. Oh yeah, I'm not even talking about that. Yeah, I'm saying yeah. that there's a lot of like, you know, common sense stuff, stuff that stuff, you, I, and our listeners, rug, if we sat down at a table, we could fix a lot of things in about 20 minutes. This is dumb. Okay, well let's not even let's fix this. You know, right? So so when you're buying milk and meat that's organic, mm-hmm. you may want to kind of know your source. And there's a lot of different good sources um, out there where you can speak with your farmer. You can buy the milk and the meat and the eggs and whatnot from a local farmer. One is localharvest.org. Mm-hmm. They have good information for you. Um, also, thinking about the clean fifteen and the dirty dozen. Uh, which vegetables are less likely to, sp- to be sprayed with mm-hmm. pesticides and absorb it versus the ones that are more likely. Right. So just some information there on about what you may have not known about uh, when it comes to the uh, healthiness of the food in which we're eating, whether it's or uh, organic or inorganic. Well, when we come back, author Tova, Tova Martin will be with us. Uh, to talk about her new book and to educate us about some gardening techniques. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Use Twitter to reach Joey and Holly at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from Plant Success Organics.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination, ability, and healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponic root cutting, seed sprouting, cocoa core, and soil. Plant Success Organics.com carries powder, granule, and tablet form of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil to give your plant the optimal opportunity to produce incredible harvest. For more information and to purchase, visit Plant Success Organics. Are you short on time when it comes to grocery shopping? Yes, I'm talking to you. Shopwoodmans.com offers online shopping for store pickup or delivery on their over 60,000 plus items at Woodman's Everyday Low Prices. Or online, select a pickup or delivery time and create more time to do what you want. Leave the work to Woodman's. Also, check out the shopwoodmans.com app. You can even make special requests like specific sizes of produce. For more information, visit shopwoodmans.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit BobX.com. B-O-B-B. 
Tall Earth Wood Treatment All-in-One Preservative and Stain offers lifetime protection and creates a unique silver-aged wood finish. All ingredients are non-toxic, eco-friendly, perfect for garden beds and veg trunks. Find out more at TallEarth.com. Free shipping on all orders. Use coupon code W-I-S-C-O-N-V-E-G to save 15% off orders placed at TallEarth.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear in all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Rebel Green, responsibly made natural products that are good for you and the environment. Made in the USA, plant-based, vegan, and always toxic-free. Find out more at rebelgreen.com. Use coupon code WIVEG15 to save 15% off your next purchase at rebelgreen.com forward slash shop. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Flame Engineering, Eco Garden Systems, Bob X, Plant Success, Beans and Barley, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Assassin, Manure Tea, the Gardener's Hollow Leg. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Well, it may be getting colder outside, but we've got some warm days left here before winter hits, which we can get our um, yard work done. Uh, whether you have, you need gravel, you need sand, you need mulch, we can always mulch things, or you need compost to top off your raised beds or mix in with your garden or, or whatever the case is, uh, Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden has that material, over 40 varieties of bulk material, largest in the area, and that's no joke, they actually have more variety. They have a lot. They have a lot, mm-hmm. uh, and a knowledgeable staff that will tell you whether or not you need to have or buy that item uh, or yeah, not. they're not just going to sell you any old junk. Hey, we gonna... sold some more soil. No, right, that no. that's not how they. No, that's not no, how they they're work. Gonna, they're going to work with you and look at your vision and assist you in the best way. possible. And we've had testimonies, and we've read them on the show where they have come out to individuals' homes. The individual said, "Here is what I want to do." They have suggested, "Hey, that's not going to work as well as you think it will." Here's what we would suggest. And, and they worked together. It wasn't just, oh, okay, whatever. We know you're going to be ho- uh, horribly disappointed, so we're going to do it anyway so we can get your, your money and move on. That's not how they work. That's, they've been in business since 1955, so they're doing something right by listening to the customer, what the customer wants, and then adding their expertise in order to make sure the customer is satisfied and happy and guide them in a direction that in the long run the customer will be more uh, pleased with what the product completion is than what they expected it to be. Definitely. So you can find Blue Mills at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. Um, go to bluemills.com or call 414-282-4220. Well, Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our next guest. Uh, Tova Martin, in her constant undying pursuit of all things garden-related, Tova gets her hands dirty both outside and indoors. She's a perennial heirloom vegetable and cottage gardener of fanatical proportions, and she's accredited by NOFA as an organic land care professional. Beyond the Garden Outdoors, she has um, decades of experience with tropicals in windowsills, greenhouses, and otherwise. She's an author and a blogger. Welcome to the program, Tova. Hello, hello. Good well, morning. Thank, <clears throat> thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join Holly, myself, and all of our listeners on the program to educate us all. Thank you. Now, you write about how you used to get rid of your moss. It drove you crazy. You were like, the heck with this stuff. But now you embraces, embrace it. Why is moss a great addition to any landscape? Well, um, you know, the beauty of, of moss and, and, you know, it, it's just part of an awakening that I had that um, something like moss, uh, you know, it, 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 it's something we sort of saw. People told us we should remove it, and suddenly I realized, well, wow, this is this beautiful carpet that is emerald green throughout a long period of time. Um, it's the first thing that you notice in the spring. It's the last thing to go in the fall. It doesn't need to be mowed. Um, so it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing in your garden. And, and what we have learned about moss, uh, we watched some outdoor shows and some survival stuff. It's a great filtration system in order to purify, well, not necessarily purify, but clean water before it goes back into streams uh, that may have some levels of unhealthy toxicity in it. Mm, it is sponge-like, yes. 
Okay. Um, now, for every for every an everyday gardener, what do we most commonly forget to do in the garden? Well, you know, I, I what I found is that what I often did was run in and just tackle jobs. Um, you know, uh, I, I did chores, and I forgot to really look, you know, really enjoy the garden, really get what I could get out of the garden. Um, and it's, you know, it, it every sense, uh, once I start plugging in sense by sense and really experiencing the garden, I realized that it had so much to give me. So what we forget to do, I think, is we forget to really appreciate this beautiful habitat that we've created and it gives to us on all levels but it's not only us it's also all the insects that it it, um, nurtures and all the birds that feed off it it's a really big thing and once you realize that it's it's just so fulfilling well, and you're right, taking time to, to, to look at what you've done, and a lot, and we're in a fast-paced world, get in, get out, i got to do this, i got to do that, there's no time to appreciate what you've done, and what I have learned to, and, and to do is whenever we go to the garden and work in the garden, I'll take photographs of things that I think are like, why am I taking a picture of this, but I'll go back and look at it later and realize, look at that, look at this, I didn't see this originally, and you understand more on a, on a smaller level uh, how detailed and how pretty things are, and you understand more about it than just a rush in, rush out type of thing. Exactly, and I think you really got the nub of it. Um, if you, you know, when you take a picture or something like that, you you really look at it, and again, we we really you really look, um, but that's just one sense. Um, there's so much to smell, you know, just smelling. It's autumn now. Smell the dis. The, difference in the air smell the leaves um smell the mushrooms just smell the air the wood smoke floating on it um it's also um touching it it's also um on all levels it's listening to the wind you know um it's listening to the bird song definitely now what is the importance of designated walk areas in the garden well um you know the way you move through a garden is so important. You're sending a message not only to your own feet but to visitors that come, guests in your garden. You're saying walk slowly um, if you put maybe paving stones far apart or if you're having one, um, you know, path, then you're saying you can, you know, you can kind of walk quickly here or maybe there's a crossroads in the garden. You're saying stop here look around before you turn the bend. Right, and also, if we look back and remember a traditional <clears throat> garden, if we were growing up, no matter what you did in that traditional exposed soil garden, there's a certain amount of walking that you have to do. So if you can designate specific areas where those are always going to be transition path- passages, uh, you can not really ruin the soil in other areas and still take in what you talked about, looking and, and, and exploring and understanding what's going on. I think you're so right. Um, you know, oh, I, I've, I'm in an awful lot of gardens um, because I write for magazines. And, uh, boy, you know, it's such a difference when somebody has a designated area that is convenient to go from one place to the next. And yeah, and you're not getting tangled up in and and vines and everything else. That they've got it, it, it. It's planned out to make it easy for you to transition in a garden, but also it's very very functional as well. It's a it's a controlled uh, chaos type of thing. <laughs> it is, and um, you know, it, it it. I always so value the the best route between two spaces, and also not doing dead end. Exactly. Exactly. Now, many people can see this time of year as ugly and brown, and you kind of touched on this before, or they can see it as picturesque and colorful. What are some ways that you embrace the beauty of fall? You know, um, autumn is, it, it, I mean, brown is beautiful um, it, when you look at it. But the beauty of autumn is that it, it actually is this wonderful progression. And every day is so different than the day before. When I was working on this book, The Garden in Every Sense Season, 
I really noticed the difference between one day and the next. Um, you know, one day something is kind of just kind of turned a little blush. The next day it's on fire. And you can actually become a better gardener to fill in this season by looking. You can really be more, uh, you know, uh, really think about, oh, well, wow, you know, a little bit more orange right there would really pop, you know. So um, that's, you know, that's really looking at, at the season. Right, and let's talk about your new book here. You've got it broke down in a unique way that I've not seen other books. You, you've got it broke down in all four seasons, and then in those seasons, you've got it broke down to uh, five different categories of, of sight, smell, sound, touch, and taste. Uh, it's a very unique thing, and you go over each one of those individually based on the season that we're covering and talking about in the book. Right, and, you know, again, that was part of the awakening that I... When I started plugging in, I sort of had to really consciously think, okay, today I am going to uh, feel my way around the garden. And, um, it, you know, it, when you start doing that, when you really conscientiously think that way, then you really um, get so much more out of the garden. So, and, and a lot of the readers do it season by season. They They say, okay, you know, it's the beginning of autumn. I'm going to do this as sort of a discipline, and they'll read the chapters and read the essays, and they'll and then they'll go out and do it themselves, and they will see so much more and really write their own dialogue too. Now, with, with how how large is the garden that you garden in? Um, I call my place Furthermore. I'm in New England, and I um, have seven acres. And I have all kinds of gardens. I have a cottage garden in front of the cottage, and I have um, perennial gardens, and I have a meadow and vegetable garden, berry garden, pasture for the goats, a huge meadow. Um, so I have a lot of different habitats. Where, where did the name come from? How did you come up with that name? Furthermore, you know, when I write... Um, and, and I've been writing ever since I've, I was a kid. Um, I use that word a lot, but it's also, you know, indicative of being a gardener who just never sees the end of, you know, project, project, project. There's always more, more acreage to tackle. Yeah, I grew up on a farm, and that's kind of the same thing. There's never an end point. There's always we just got to do something else, and we've ran out of time today. Uh, we, we talk about your book and the and the four, all throughout the seasons. Do you have a particular season, or is it like saying that you know it's hard picking which child is your favorite child? Is there one that stands out to you you in, embrace more than others? Well, you know, um, it's really uh, it, 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 I'm so fickle. It, it's the season I'm in right at that moment, and again, you you begin to see more about it. Even winter, you know, I would have thought. Winter was really a downtime. Well, I no longer think of winter as a downtime at all. It's when you see the contours of your land, and it's when you see the beautiful structure of the bare naked trees, and um, you really can learn a lot about as a gardener from plugging in in winter as well. Uh, even you know the crisp air, winter air. Um, Everything, uh, you know, the smell of snow, and you can smell it. Um, it's uh, when you're when you're not all muffled up when, in mufflers. But um, there you go. Uh, Everything is so exciting. I would have to agree about winter, especially right before it snows. There's like this change in the air, and I feel I feel like you can kind of relaxing smell calm. The, right, like you kind of smell the snow and, and feel it coming. Uh, you really can, and um, you know, one of my favorite sounds. Sound of silence. Mm-hmm. You know, right after snow and no one can get out yet. I love that that sound. Uh, you talked about uh, earlier whenever we want to slow down and look in the garden. Uh, I'm reminded by a gardener who we interviewed several years ago on a, on a program, and he said, "What you want to do is you want to just find a spot in your garden and lay down flat on the ground and look up. Just look up. Ooh. You will be amazed of what you didn't know was there." That's really good advice. I'm going to try that one. <laughs> well, Tova, where where can we find your your new book at? Where are we where was the best locations to for our listeners to travel to? 
Well, you can get this, the garden in every sense and season, really, wherever books are sold. Um, you can get it online. You can get it at your local bookstore. Uh, it's published by Timber Press. And um, it, you can also find me at, on my Facebook page, which is Plants Wise by Tova Martin, or um, go to my website, tovamartin.com, and I lecture all over the country, so um, hope to see you all sometime. Well, Tova, we greatly appreciate you taking time, joining us on the program, and educating Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Absolutely. Thank you. And when we come back, your garden questions and our garden answers, you're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Twenty four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just ninety nine cents at migardener dot com. Now with over four hundred and fifty varieties of non GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full grown plants, rootmaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants, to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. Rootmaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit Rootmaker.com. Hostels wants to help you grow your own food. From seed starting supplies, hand tools, drip irrigation, harvesting equipment, and a complete line of all-natural pest control solutions, they've got you covered. Keep your garden weed-free with their time-tested, American-made wheel hose that are built to last a lifetime. And the Precision Garden Seeders have proven design for planting a wide variety of seeds. Haas Tools has what you need to get the most out of your growing space, large or small. Free shipping and outstanding customer service. Shop online or request a free catalog at HaasTools.com. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Purple Cow Organics quickly and naturally increases the uptake of nutrients and water to your plants with their new bioactive vegetable supercharger designed to meet the unique needs by helping the living organisms in the soil help plants uptake the nutrients more quickly through their roots and leaves. Find out more at purplecoworganics.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is brought to you by the following. Handy Safety Knife, BioSafe, Tall Earth, Chapin International, The Plant Booster, Ivy Organics, Woodman's Market, Blue Mills Landscaping Garden Center, Purple Cow Organics. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. And, and you're absolutely right about the tomatoes. Next to a very good woman, tomatoes come in a close second. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Ivy Organic 3 Plant Garden actually protects plants against damaging sunburn, 
insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs as practice non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivorganics.com. And you can call in with your garden question at 414-444-5250. You can also email us at any time at twvgshow at gmail.com. Had several questions come in on a number of platforms this week. Uh, Canyon question, Holly, I will address it to you. This came in earlier this week. We did address it in a timely fashion, but I wanted to bring it up today because people may also be uh, questioning uh, if they had this incident happen to them. I canned taco soup yesterday. Number one, do you know what taco soup is? Uh, no. Okay. I mean, like, I do, but I don't... You've I, never... Like, we've never done it. Yeah. Okay. I canned taco soup yesterday while washing my jars, uh, cleaning them after they've been sealed. I noticed I had one jar that had a false seal. Number one, explain what a false seal okay, is. Okay, so false seal is where you go to check the seal on your jars, and, um, and then it doesn't really fully seal it might just ping but it doesn't fully seal so that is the the false seal that's what that is um okay so, so we, you can click in the middle basically okay so my jar does not like um uh, okay oh uh, so can i still process it today which which was in 24 hours or um is it no good to go sure so what you want to do is you can reprocess it what you would do is you would take, um, take you would what? take the jar okay. and put it in your canner. This is a pressure canner. No, no, no. No, this, this is, water, is a water bath. Water bath. So I don't, I don't know exactly how she canned it. Okay. But if it was a water bath canner, you take it, put it in your canner, fill it with water, the canner, and then at room temperature, and then you start your boiling from there. And then once it's it comes to a boil, that's when you start your timer. New lid, new material, or new new liquid in it. And then everything starts at a, as a at one temperature, and you bring it up, and you then you process when the boiling uh, aspect, when the boiling happens in the canner. That's when you right. Time it. And if you don't want to go through that process, you can put it in the fridge and eat it within a couple weeks. Okay, let's go to the Ivy Organics Three in One Plant Guard Hotline. Caller, you're on the air. Well, blessed and joyful Saturday morning to you, Joy and Howie. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, nice to be on your show there. Well, uh, you were speaking about the organics there a, a while back there. And uh, I love my I love my cheese, you know, macaroni and cheese. My cheese on my um, uh, uh, di- different things, pizzas and different things. So w- w- what's up with these? I, I mean, my, my my sister bought some um, generic cheese, and it, it, the stuff didn't even melt. I mean, it was just as good as you know bathroom uh, vinyl tile there. You know, it, stuff didn't even melt there. So what what's up with these people that's making all this generic? Uh, cheese and stuff that just, it, it stuff doesn't even melt. I, 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 I don't even know if I even want to call it cheese. It's just, you know, just a, um, almost like a frisbee. <laughs> this, uh, well, this. it just depends on what the cheese is. So there is imitation cheese out there. Um, I've seen it, it <laughs> at the, at the grocery store. Um, also. If you cannot find on the package the word cheese, it's, it's not, not cheese. Well, it's <laughs> right, absolutely. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. There are some so, national uh-oh. brands that have, it's, does not use the word cheese at all on any of their text on their package. Right. Also, so, yeah, a lot of that cheese has caking agents in it too, mm-hmm. or anti-caking mm-hmm. agents. Mm-hmm. Um, so you kind of have to look at the ingredients. Yeah, I, I, I find it hard to eat. I, she gives it to me. I say, well, what'd you give it to me for? It doesn't even melt, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Have thank a great day. Go Brewers. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we got a few, uh, another time for a question here. Uh, I have a, uh, uh, let's see, how much space does Brussels sprouts take? I, I've seen photographs on your social media platforms and I'm looking and interested in growing them next year. How much space do they really take? I would say about at two, least two one, to three, two to three square feet. Yeah, because they kind of they kind of bush out. It's like mm-hmm. a small bush, so that grows vertical. That grows vertical. Right. So you do need about two to three square feet. So they do take a little bit of space, but if you can get them to take on and grow, you're going to get a lot of Brussels sprouts in that one plant area. Right, and we talked about that earlier in the program. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, I, I am new to canning, and I live in Sweden. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, and canning isn't a huge thing here. I know that sugar has preservative properties, but I am wondering when you're making the jam or jelly or even relish with vegetables, do you really have to add sugar at all? Or if you're going to boil it or pressure can it, um, 
is it, is it okay to go ahead and not add the sugar that is required uh, by recipe? Mm-hmm. And then it says, thanks for the great YouTube account. I'm learning yeah. a lot. Yeah. So thank you from Sweden. Uh, thank you from the United States, Sweden. Um, yeah, so some of the, it depends on what you're making. Jam, uh, Jams and jellies require that sugar to help the pectin. So there is low sugar pectin, like Pomona pectin, mm-hmm. that you can purchase, and then you can use less sugar. If it's a relish, a lot of times it's for taste. It depends on what you're canning. Uh, things that are pressure canned don't necessarily require much sugar. So you have to follow the recipe, though. You have to follow the recipe. You can't, canning, uh, can't leave something out, otherwise right. it messes so this could, whole there's thing There's a lot up. of low sugar, sugar alternative recipes out there online for you. All right, another question has come in from Tracy. She said, if... I'm going to use my coffee grounds in the garden. How dry should they be? Well, that's a great question. Coffee grounds have uh, a lot of uh, good properties. You can put them in your compost pile uh, as a nitrogen supplement, uh, to the green material that you need in order to heat the compost pile up. Uh, you can uh, also put them in the garden. They have about 2% nitrogen, uh, 0.5 potassium, 0.2 phosphorus, somewhere in that range. So you don't have to let them dry out. The key to this is, now whether you're using your own coffee grounds or you go to your local coffee shop and provide them with a uh, device in which they can put the the material in, uh, a lot of these coffee shops just bring a five-gallon bucket in, a tote of some so- sort. They just dump the filters and the grains grounds in there, and it's all uh, good. You don't have to sort out the, uh, the filters. That all break down. You want to mix it into your garden. Just broadcasting the coffee grounds on the garden is fine, okay? It's going to add material, organic material. It's going to, you know, work in the soil eventually. But you're going to lose the nutrient value of the coffee grounds. Uh, So you want to work them in somehow, cover them over. If you put them down and then put leaves on top of them, something to prevent those from, you know, drying out and that nutrient value evaporating uh, from the grounds. Uh, The other thing that, uh, people are concerned with is that, oh, if I add coffee grounds to my garden, it will turn the soil acidic. Now, coffee grounds are on the acidic side. But most of that, if not all of that, from what science has shown and tests has, and studies have proven, is ha- that has all been brewed out. That goes into your coffee cup and not st- it doesn't stay in the ground. So it's almost a completely neutral-based pH, uh, uh, pH level uh, whenever you're putting it in the garden. So you want to cover it. It doesn't have to be dry. Uh, if you're going to work it in your compost pile, that's that's good as well. And filters are biodegradable, just like they're, they're, they're a very thin paper, so they can be worked in the soil also. And even if you get coffee grounds or you stored them and they've gotten moldy, that's fine. Go ahead and work them in the soil. That would be perfectly fine for your garden. Uh, we've... Uh, accidentally left them in the you know bag or the bucket and they've gotten molded there's nothing wrong with it. it's just a, a fungi and uh mold and that type of thing so just work it in the soil the microbial life in the soil will will help break it down the worms uh love the coffee grounds and will bring uh, worms into the garden but we are out of time and we always certainly appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us on the program miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it it's an entirety you can certainly do that by a couple of options going to your web uh, your favorite search in- engine and typing in the wisconsin vegetable gardener radio show or your podcast providing website whichever one it may be and type in the wisconsin vegetable gardener radio show we're on many different platforms and next year in 2019 we'll be adding to those uh, other platforms that we are not currently on you can also go to the website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. Click on the radio tab, which will give you full-length in-studio video or in uh, highlights, or uh, full-length in-studio video and the full-length podcast. If you want the highlights of specific interviews and individual topics, you can do that on the highlight tab on the right-hand side of the main page there. Um, programming note, join us next week for the final episode, final show. First 2018 Season 2 of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, where we're going to discuss algae bloom, the effects that fertilizer has on our waterways, whether we're talking Great Lakes, little town far, a little farm town in, in central Illinois, or the red tide in the, the uh, Florida, uh, Florida coastline, as well as what you can do 
over winter to prepare for spring gardening next year. And our guest, she is a contributor to Natural News, as well as she has hosted the Robert Scott Bell Show, and she is the host of her own podcast, Homegrown Health. Joni Abbott will be with us, plus your garden questions. That's next week for our final show. Until then, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcast, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM. Courier Communication Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.